This is the most remarkable creature you've never heard of. Tori Topsis Dornai start life as tiny sea anemones. Swirling around the ocean, they transform into polyps and metamorphosize into medusa jellyfish. These animals show zero evidence of any biological aging with time, and most incredibly, they can reverse the aging process. If they're injured or stressed, they turn themselves back into a polyp and restart life, earning them the nickname, the immortal jellyfish. So what if we as humans could do the same? But instead of becoming babies, we stay youthful for centuries. According to David Sinclair, Professor Denix at Harvard, one of Times Magazine's 100 Most Influential People of the Year, it's more plausible than ever before to imagine human life at one or 200 years old. Because based on his clinical studies, we're on the cutting edge. I'm gonna break down every single scientific discovery both David Sinclair and other researchers found to reverse our aging processes. These will expand your lifespan by adding more years to your life, but just as importantly, expand your health span, keeping you youthful and healthier for much longer. But before diving in, it's essential to understand the new science of aging and why these principles work. Starting off with the fact that aging is a disease and the mother of all illnesses because when your body ages, it's incapable of repairing itself. For example, if a child fractures his hip, he'll be fine in six weeks. But if a 60-year-old does, it's time to start writing up the will. The scientific consensus switched between a universal cause of aging DNA mutation to eight or nine hallmarks, but Sinclair believes in a single reason. Lost information in our epigenome. Essentially, our body's survival kit forgets how to regenerate healthy cells, protect our immune system, create restorative genes, etc., which is lethal. However, our bodies also contain sirtuins and other molecules you can think of as longevity genes. And if we activate them just enough and in the right way, we can keep our bodies from forgetting how to be young and healthy, aka aging. If there was only one thing that I could say to everybody, it would be to eat less often. Thousands of studies show a massive increase in lifespan of mammals when calories are restricted over a large portion of their lives. This does not necessarily mean consuming fewer calories. Through periodic calorie restriction, like skipping meals or fasting every other day, we can eat the same amount, but with the added benefit of reversing aging. In a 2021 study published in the journal Nature studying fruit flies, who share 70% of disease-related genes as humans, found that flies put a schedule of alternate day fasting, where after 20 hours, they open their fast at lunch, followed by unlimited eating the rest of that day and the following day, send the lifespan of females by 18% and males by 13%. Additionally, in a 2019 abstract published the American Heart Association's journal found the subjects who had practiced intermittent fasting for longer than five years had a 49% less risk of death compared to non-fasters. Surprisingly, those subjects who practiced intermittent fasting for less than five years experienced no survival benefit. Although this abstract didn't disclose what kind of fasting those subjects were doing, all studies have encountered show that any kind of intermittent fasting or alternative day fasting will expand our lifespan as long as your eating window is mainly during the day and not strictly at night. Also, all longevity researchers I've seen interviewed practice intermittent fasting, usually with a two to seven hour eating window from noon to evening. In short, fasting puts biological stress on our bodies. Like significant stresses like malnourishment makes us more resilient. And you should ease into it when you decide to start. Try one meal a day. Drink coffee, drink tea, drink water, fill up your stomach. You'll get used to that. Give it at least two weeks for your body to get used to it and your liver to start making its own sugar. And then try lunch as well. You might find that you've never felt better, looked better, been able to concentrate better during the day and even sleep better. Cold exposure is like an action we can take to reverse the aging process. Our bodies contain both white fat and brown fat. White fat is what you typically imagine as stuff on your waist and love handles you're kind of embarrassed by. But brown fat, which is mainly on our back and shoulders, is essential for us staying healthy. It contains loads more mitochondria and controls our body's temperature, reducing high cholesterol, high triglyceride levels, etc. Fortunately, as we age, we start to lose our brown fat. However, according to the National Institute of Health, after subjects were exposed to a mild cold climate for a month, they had a 42% increase in brown fat volumes, but these levels were turned to your base under in the following month of only a neutral temperature. Our bodies continuously break themselves down and build themselves back up at the cellular level, but cold shots make this process way more efficient and robust. And they help with muscle recovery by reducing inflammation, as well as tension and fatigue by reducing cortisol, our body's stress hormone. You don't need to become Wim Hof to achieve ideal results, although there are benefits to extreme limited cold exposure, and it is a fun challenge. Ooh. God, 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 Ooh. Ooh. Okay. But 15 minutes per week of a mild, stressful cold will do the trick. This can be cold showers, a cold pool dive, even a walk to your car without a jacket if it's winter time. As long as the cold is enough to get you to clench your teeth, but slowly get used to it. By far, the easiest way to start is to set your shower to completely cold during the last 30 to 60 seconds and build up from there. But I would recommend just starting entirely cold showers because they also build up your mental resilience and have tons of other benefits. 
Now, extreme heat works the same way that cold exposure does. The sense that through clothing, air conditioning, heating, our bodies stay at more or less the same temperature during our entire lives, letting our sirtuins relax and our epigenome degrade way more rapidly. But similarly to the cold, the biological stress of heat through something like a sauna can prevent just that. It puts a bit of a shock in your body. The whole thing is called hormesis. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. You become resilient and long-lived. Researchers from the University of Eastern Finland tracked 2,300 middle-aged men for an average of 20 years, then divided them into three groups according to how often they used a sauna. They found that of the men who went to a sauna once a week, 49% died during the study, compared to 38% of those who went two to three times, and just 31% of those who went four to seven times. Frequent sauna visits mean a lower cardiovascular risk and a lower chance of a stroke. Also, you could expect a 30% less chance of a heart attack at any given moment. Regarding how much time to spend, 57 minutes per week is what I found to be the ideal sweet spot. And based on the previous study, it's best to break that time up across the entire week if it's possible. The following way we can prevent aging is by preventing DNA damage to our bodies. This causes rapid epigenomic instability. Regrettably, living in the modern world, we're all basically bathing in DNA damaging chemicals. Smoking tobacco is the worst legal mainstream vice you can have for this. Smokers, you can measure it, are older biologically than people who've never smoked. That's why they look older too. It's a decade off your life. And this is not some victimless private activity. The amount of DNA damage from secondhand smoke is 50 times higher than firsthand. The smoke from car emissions and pollution typical in big cities is also quite bad for you, but it's no to the same level. So you can avoid it. Obviously, don't smoke. Don't be near smokers. Try to avoid living in a big city or being near a major interstate. Additionally, you want to avoid chemical compounds like PCBs and organ halides. PCBs are found in plastic and cause numerous adverse health effects like cancer. And when you heat up plastic, exponential more PCBs are released. Organ halides are found in things like solvents, degreasers, pesticides, anything that comes in a can with a nozzle that you put under your kitchen sink. Be very cautious with inhaling these. And also when you can, find non-chemical alternatives as well as with plastics. Just avoid them if you can, and especially avoid heating up plastics. And lastly, avoid any radiation source as well, since it also causes DNA damage. The most common interaction with radiation is at the airport. Although research does suggest that scanner machines don't do much DNA damage and the new millimeter wave scanners cause even less, there is no research on what their long-term effect on our epigenome is. Being someone that flies quite often, I offer TSA pre-check and get pat down as long as there isn't a guy doing them. It's impossible to avoid all DNA damage in the modern world, so thanks for epigenome set up to deal with a certain level of breakages. The game is ensuring we limit the damage as much as possible. As you'd imagine, exercise also triggers longevity genes, but to get maximum results, you want to be doing HIIT training frequently. At the Mayo Clinic, researchers studying the effects of different styles of exercise found that although all types have benefits, HIIT, high intensity interval training, significantly raises our heart and respiration levels, which engages the most significant number of health promoting genes, especially in older people. Specifically, when you lose your breath, your breathing is deep, it's rapid, it's at 80% of your maximum rate, you start to get a few words out without stopping for breath, you're sweating a lot, that creates an excellent hypoxic response for triggering just enough stress to get your body to activate defenses against aging. Additionally, in a study where researchers reviewed the medical records of more than 55,000 people and cross-referenced them with death certificates, they were unsurprised that runners were far less likely to die of heart disease. But surprised the results were similar regardless of how much running they did. Even about 10 minutes of moderate exercise a day added years to their life, just as much as runners who ran for hours a day. So to maximize your lifespan and your health span, you want to do some mild amount of exercise every single day, even if it's something as small as just a brisk walk. But at least three times per week, do a HIIT workout. This can be something like cycling through sprinting full force for 30 seconds and then walking for two minutes. We're gonna make this a lot more fun and pick up a new skill Do a full body cardio heavy martial art like Muay Thai or wrestling. Your diet will also play a significant role in the aging process. As for what not to consume, alcohol is the deadliest thing which is legal in most of the world. It causes substantial oxidative stress to your body, which taxes it severely because it does cause DNA damage. And Dr. Sinclair recommends avoiding sugary drinks and sugary foods that lead to type 2 diabetes and cause cardiovascular disease on top of shutting off sirtuins. I am for a plant-based diet, but I do eat meat occasionally. It's very clear where you go to the longest lived places in the world. The blue zones. They're not eating all meat. Um, and actually we know that if you eat a lot of meat, you shut down some of these longevity pathways. You might look good and grow muscle. And that's great when you're young, you wanna find a mate, you wanna look good. But in the long run, I don't think that's healthy. There are five blue zones in the world, basically with the longest living people, and they all rely on a plant-based diet. For example, Okinawa, Japan, nicknamed Land of the Immortals, where people live to be an average of 80 years old, eat a diet made up primarily of sweet potatoes, rice, and other vegetables. When also looking at Nicoya, Costa Rica, the only blue zone in Latin America, the diet consists mainly of whole grains, dairy, and vegetables. And although research on nutrition is quite conflicting and does rely a large amount on the individual person's background, looking at all five blue zones, they all follow this diet model. So if your goal is to primarily reverse aging, it would be in your best interest to follow a mainly plant-based diet. 
Also, when pulling data on Blue Zones, I found similarities amongst all their cultures revolving around social life and purpose. They all maintain strong social networks, have a great sense of family connection, and a strong sense of purpose, usually related to the greater good of their community and the area that they're in. And a review of 148 studies with over 300,000 subjects indicated a 50% increased likelihood of survival for those participants with stronger social relationships, regardless of age, sex, and initial health status. Based on the data, some researchers claim that loneliness is as bad for your health as smoking and more of an influential risk factor than obesity and a sedentary lifestyle. Similarly, in a study at Boston University School of Public Health, published in Preventative Medicine, found that having a purpose in life lowers risk of all causes of mortality, regardless of gender, race, or ethnicity, but the effects are more pronounced among women. Relationships are often a hassle in the modern world, especially creating new ones. But as the research suggests, sharing memories and laughs with people you care about is well worth the time because you gain time. Lastly, there are things you can do besides lifestyle changes to live longer. Thanks to modern science, things like supplements and drugs can aid in reversing aging. And the big three are NMN, resveratrol, and metformin. Resveratrol is a small polyphenol. It's produced by many plants to survive, and it's concentrated in red wine. I take a gram of it every morning. We have shown in many animal studies, and people have now shown in human studies, that it's activating one of the main sirtuin pathways called SIRT1. does that like an accelerator pedal. The chemical bind to the enzyme and make it work fast. Faster. Now, that's the accelerator pedal for SIRT1. The gas is NAD. NAD is a molecule that we need for life. Without it, we're dead in 30 seconds. Best bang for the buck is to eat molecules that the body uses to make this NAD molecule. And the one that I choose to take is called NMN, short for nicotinamide mononucleotide. NMN is important because it's the immediate precursor to make NAD, and the body makes NAD very rapidly. And I know from clinical trials that I've been involved with that taking a gram of NMN, which I do every day, raises NAD levels in cells in the blood. The doubling of that NAD is important because as we get older, we make less of this chemical. We have about half the levels of NAD in our skin, for example. And so I boost those levels back up to being youthful. I am obliged to tell you to consult with your doctor first before starting any of these. And it would take me way too long to dive deep into all of them, but I'll have a link below if you want to learn more about them on your own. And do remember the lifestyle changes you make will have a bigger impact on reversing aging than supplementation and drugs will at this point in time. We're living in very interesting times at the moment where through modern technology, people are living shorter lives due to the increased ease, social acceptance of being obese and unhealthy, as well as the access to sedentary lifestyles. But at the same time, we have the technology and knowledge to live longer and healthier than ever before. So how you choose to use the modern world's fruits are up to you. And I wish you the absolute best in your own life. I hope you took some valuable insights away from this video. If you want to learn more about health and success, do subscribe, check out the cool links in the description below. Like signing off for my weekly newsletter. Also check out this video, you'll like it. Wishing you the best and I'll catch you in the next one.